the meditation is not something easy that, that they show in our Western culture that it's such an easy practice and take your clothes off and sit by the tree. Meditation is actually the last stage of a spiritual development. It's a full-fledged attack against shaitan and as soon as you intend to meditate there will be a hyper-awareness of how much you're under attack from shaitan. So somebody who never has gone to a doctor, especially on uh, what's the word for cancer? Oncologist. They think they're very healthy. They never go to doctor, Shaykh, I never go to doctor, I'm very healthy, very healthy. Until one day some sicknesses come to them and they go to a doctor. The doctor says, wait, you, you've got a whole lot of problems going on. You didn't recognize anything but there's tremendous amounts of sicknesses coming out and all of a sudden then the person realizes how sick they are and they say, oh I didn't know I was so sick. There's no difference in the spiritual realm. As soon as you intend to make meditation and sit and try to make your zikr praisings upon Sayyidina Muhammad do it in our system where you're playing salawats, defending your ears from any waswas, you begin to see how difficult the process is. So I can't sit for two seconds without something agitating me, uh-huh. Now you're in the doctor's exam room, there's something wrong and Allah wanted you to see it. You don't have the ability to sit for two minutes, five minutes, six minutes with yourself, to know yourself who knows himself will know his Lord. You can't play the salawat, you can't do all of these things, you can't put the fragrances because you're under satanic attack and shaitan doesn't allow you to sit, doesn't allow you to play it. That's what Allah wanted you to know that all oh, people of tafakkur stop and realize how much you're under attack. Only at the time that you recognize your sickness is there ever a path of healing that opens. Otherwise if you're ignorant of your sickness you say, I don't need these people, you don't need us, wait until you're full-fledged in difficulty, it's too late at that time. But when they identify their problem that's the first step in spiritual healing and spiritual development. I know I can't sit. I get angry, something's happening, I can't put the water on myself, I can't make wudu. Those are all the first steps of awareness that how much the person is under attack. So they said, then you got to be making your zikr, you have to make the salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad You have to keep making, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem at least a hundred times a day sitting, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. With every Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Allah open, open and a faraj, a difficulty to be taken away. Salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad and then sit after you make your namaz. If you come back and say, I can't even make my namaz. Then again that's a sign how difficult the person is under attack. Then you email the shaykh and they try to give you the awrads, the zikrs and the process that's necessary to combat that difficulty. As soon as you acknowledge it and understand it, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ Allah never leaves the servant to be in the hands of shayateen. That as soon as you identify it the shaykhs pray for you, you pray for yourself that I need Ya Rabbi's support, I understand I'm under difficulty, I'm under the, the oppression of shaitan, grant me a najat, grant me a, a power to release myself from that difficulty inshaAllah. Okay, these two questions are similar. Um, how should we ask for madad and make rabita with the shaykh? Also what adab and ihtiram should one keep for the rabita? Ya Rabbit al-Sharif is to keep the way of holding the rope. Where Allah described, hold tight to the rope and tafaraq, don't make a separation from the rope. Means our life was like a golden chain, not even a rope, is chain yourself to that reality. Say, Ya Rabbi, akulu ma sadiqeen. You said, have a taqwa and keep the company of the truthful servants and I'm with the shaykhs. I'm asking to be under the rabita, under their hands and tied to that reality. Then the app we have and everybody has the different madad and support. Asking for the madad of the shaykhs, calling upon their names, asking for their madad, visualizing that you're in their association and then always acknowledging, Ya Rabbi I'm a weak servant. When Allah said, وَكُلُمَا صَادِقِينَ that have a taqwa in life, 
and keep the company of my truthful servants, Allah doesn't care for the material world. This was not keep a physical company with the shaykh and go have hamburger with him. This was the spiritual company is that are you keeping their company spiritually? Are you envisioning that you're always with them? Are you visualizing that, that they're in front of me? I remember them, I see them, Ya Rabbi let me to always be in their association. If I can visualize that I'm sitting with them and that I'm making my zikr, I'm making my salawat, I'm asking to be under their nazar, this was the order of Allah If you truly have a taqwa and consciousness, taqwa means that are your senses open? The mutaqeen whom have a high level of taqwa means that Allah gave them a taqwa on all their senses. That's why Allah in now that holy ayah is saying, ittaqullah because these are mutaqeen that their taqwa, they have a fear in their ears not to lose their connection with Allah As soon as they're listening to something wrong, their heart begin to beat, something's not right. Allah's warning them, you're going to lose my hearing. If they, mutaqeen, if they have eyes that are conscious, they're not looking at everything haram and Allah says, I'm about to shut off your vision and it's going to take a long time for you to bring it back. They took a life in which to, astaghfirullah, and they close that vision from what they're looking at and they keep their vision into their heart and down where shaitan is now playing with all of them. Shaitan want to bombard your ears with every type of horrific sound bombard your eyes with every type of horrific vision to block so that you never become mutaqeen. If their hearing has been perfected, their seeing has been perfected, Allah perfect their breathing in which they breathe with a qudra and an energy, perfects their hands and their senses, their feet and their qadam, then Allah from the holy hadith that we were talking the other week is, then I be the tongue in which you speak. And at that time Allah's might and izza and the, the nazar and izza of Prophet is moving upon their tongue. Their tongue can revive the dead. It's not a tongue that entertains the brain. That's when you go to school and the professor he talks, he can make the whole room to sleep in five seconds <laughs> because he talks complete nonsense. He may not even understand what he's talking about. Brain to brain will shut off everybody's head. Right? So if you talk from the heart, it's an energy that immediately hit the heart and the people come to life. Their energy is now vibrating within their being. As soon as their body goes out of the way, they will ask Allah tonight, what I heard from your servant. Let me to swim in that ocean and that reality. And Allah said, you heard it? Then swim in it. The ocean is free to enter, there's no fee, there's no money for these courses. Allah's way is free, Allah's knowledges are free. Only thing Allah is that, have you been given the grant in which to hear it? Because Allah says, I allow my name to be mentioned in their home. Allah has to allow His name to be mentioned in your heart because His home is where? Qalb al mu'min baytullah. So it's a ni'mat, it's a grant, don't take what Allah gives as a grant and as a favour, say, I can always go to the zikr. No, because if Allah gets tired of you, He says, so, tomorrow your name will not be mentioned in my heart, in, in your house, in my house. It's a gift from Allah I allow, in Surat Al-Nur, I allow my name to be mentioned in their homes. So I mean, this is a gift from Allah we keep it, we nourish it, we, we safeguard it. And then Allah says, since you have an ihtiram and a respect for my name, you cherish it, the ability to come and to do your zikr, to mention my name, I begin to release the power of my name. Then they do their zikrs, they do their awrahs, they do all their practices inshaAllah. Sayyidi, during meditation, do we envision the light entering stomach or the heart? You can envision anything you want. <laughs> the light coming and just envision that the first phase is that you're in the presence of the shaykhs and that, Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and fill me with the light. At that time if you have a khash, if a opening from the shaykh that a light is entering into your heart and entering into your belly, that's all based on what they want to show you. 
the first step and the most important is that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and that they're in front of me and I don't have to focus on seeing them. I say, I can't see you shake your face, I can't see this shake's face, I can't see that, it doesn't matter. Just know that I'm in front of them and I'm nothing. I'm nothing, Ya Rabbi, I'm nothing just under this ni'mat, this blessing led me to be under their fires and let my heart to believe with all my belief their gaze is upon me because they are servants of Allah this is not about money, this is not about uh, membership fee. They're servants of Allah of course they have to be because they're there to serve Allah If you're calling they're arriving, if their soul is arriving then you reach to the fires. Every unique experience is based on the shaykhs what they want to so there's no description of right and wrong inshaAllah. Um, if the body and mind is enveloped with fear, what continuous zikr can we do to increase our positive energy? Constant fear again because there's some other issues too. If you have to take medicine, continue your medicine. Never leave your medicine and this way is based on mind, body and soul. If your mind is not well and that's Allah put the servant in every type of condition. There can be servants with broken legs, sickness, Allah gives a difficulty for you to walk on a crooked path. Don't try to fix people's problems, it's not for you to compete with Allah You're merely here to fix the person's faith. Allah give everybody a difficulty in life. Say, if everybody complains, let's get a bucket, everybody write their problem, put it in the bucket and take somebody else's problem. Say, no, 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 I'm happy with my problem. I know how to deal with my problem, I don't want your problem. Everybody has something, this makes the quality of your life. There has to be a squeezing, there has to be a crushing. How are you going to be patient and persevere through the difficulty Allah sends? And that's what Allah wants. It wasn't about you declaring victory for everybody, healing everybody, everybody to be great. As a matter of fact, if you ask the shaykhs, everybody's sick. And that's the way Allah wants it. He said, I, I want to put a difficulty on you and I want to see your ability to keep struggling through your difficulty. Use your zikr, use the medicine so that your mind is, is well. Use uh, good health and good nourishment and not to be excessive in which your diet becomes your religion. Your body's dying anyways. Don't say that the, these cherries are organic and that it comes from a very special farm that nobody ever touched it. As a matter of fact the organic is they take the poo poo and they put the poo poo back into the field and they put the waste of humans on those very expensive tomatoes <laughs> which Prophet forbid the use of your bodily function on any fruit. You're not allowed to urinate near a tree, you're not allowed to defecate near a tree because all of the toxins Prophet taught would go into the fruit. So what shaitan gives to all these organic rich people? Fruit filled with poo poo. <laughs> Sorry organic people, <laughs> yeah. right? They're paying big money for those things and they're taking human waste and putting it on to the fields and says, this is grey water. The water that we, we recycled, throw this water onto all the flower, yeah, whatever shaitan is doing is trying to kill everyone. The only thing that has a barakah and a blessing, take any orange you can find and make du'a, mention Allah's name upon it. You start mentioning your shaykhs, mentioning Allah mentioning Prophet mentioning your shaykhs, anything you eat, if it's even a rock it will be golden for you. In times of mushkilat and, and many awliya know and many people who have survived war on this earth, they have nothing. And awliyaullah will bring something for them, begin to make a du'a and they all eat it, they can be full for a week. If Allah want to open, Allah opens and it's by du'a. You can have the most expensive fruit and food, think that your chicken never touched the ground and everybody tickled your chicken all day long. <laughs> you farm fresh and tickled the whole time and you get sick like a dog by it. 
and Allah make somebody else eat from something else but they're sincere, they make a du'a on it and they, they're full for seven days. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.